Hello, hello. How's everyone doing? Nice to see you. I got technology working today. Hopefully you can hear me okay. I see Marianne and Ruth are already here. Rosemary, so glad you can join me live. Um, I, really I was going to record a video to do my special unboxing and then I thought I want, I want to celebrate it with you. So, so I'm glad, glad that I can do this and again that we can be um, live here together. Thank, Thank you, Barbara. Barbara. Welcome, Audrey. Um, if, if you can hear me okay, give me the thumbs up in the chat or let me know in the chat. Um, let me know even where you're tuning in from. I'm going to wait a few minutes just to give a few more people some time to connect and hop on live. Um, as I was ready to go, I was thinking, oh, I almost want to invite someone into the studio to join me um, here with me because it's the waiting to go live that I'm kind of like, hmm, is my studio tidy? What, does everything look okay? I'm just trying to, to waste some time. But um, yeah, hello, that's here, yay. Yay, yeah, so, so I'm really excited, excited to share this beautiful, beautiful palette that um, Windsor and Newton has put together for me and show you the colors that I've included and talk to you a little bit about the process and the color swatch and um, show you some examples of paintings from my book. I'm hoping we'll spend a nice, I'm hoping about 30 minutes. I'm going to try to keep to the time. If you've ever been on a live with me, I get distracted. I, there's so much that I always want to share. Um, I tend to go over, but I want to be tight with the time, just, um, you know, making sure that I respect your time as well. But I do want to be able to answer questions. Audio is good, fantastic. I do have some tech issues sometimes. Um, there's an echo. I'm not sure if that's coming from your end, Audrey, or mine. Um, sound, sound reverberation, that's interesting. I wonder, is everyone else, audio is good, slight echo, hmm. hearing the feedback, okay. Let me look at my mic, and then I will see if I can figure out tech. Here we go, I see what happened. Okay, how's audio now? Are we okay? Hopefully you won't get the echo. And that everyone, welcome Linda and Ian and Myrna and Nancy. Oh my gosh, so glad. Okay, can everyone hear me okay? Um, is the echo gone? Because I did turn off a second. Oh, terrible feedback. Okay. Yeah. Are we hearing okay? Any feedback? When I test this morning, I was perfect, and then something happened. I shut my computer down to restart it, because that's always a good thing. Perfect, perfect audio, yay. Yay, I figured it out. <laughs> the many talents of a modern artist. That is, um, yeah, <laughs> the joy is Echo's gone amazing. Yay, so good, okay. Looks like we've got a nice group here. Um, feel free to connect in the chat. I'm going to look to the chat for questions as I go. Um, I'm really excited if you're just joining um, to be able to share this experience with you live. I, as you know, have um, recently had a new book published. Well, I guess it's not really new anymore. Can we still technically call it new if it's been under a year? I don't know. I feel like how long can we call a newborn baby? A newborn baby but anyway watercolor made simple for those of you who have a copy and have supported me through the process thank you it was an incredible experience and a fantastic journey and even seeing the paintings that you've been able to create using the book um, has just been a joy it's again yet another tool that I'm hoping just helps you along your artistic journey and helps you enjoy the process and just empowers you with just good technique um, fun projects and an opportunity for you to paint so in celebration of this book, I actually um, sent a copy to my friends at Windsor & Newton, who you know, I love their paints, I love their papers, I love their brushes, that as a brand, they're really embracing featuring artists and telling stories of artists and celebrating them. And with every person that I've been able to connect with at Windsor & Newton, it just reiterates their passion for art artists and um, just enabling us with the best tools and information so that we can work on our art. So when they approached me with this idea of putting together a limited edition palette of colors that Nikki recommends and loves and uses, 
I was blown away. I was um, just so excited to be able to do this collaboration with them. The process has been fantastic. Um, and I am excited to share it with you here. I did get a sneak peek of the palette a few weeks ago when I was in um, New Orleans with, New with Windsor & Newton doing some painting projects and talking about their products. I'm a part of their education program now, which is really great. So I'm getting to learn just the, the history of color and pigment and what it takes to really create this beautiful paint. So it's been a real joy. So. Here is the set. This is what you will get um, if you decide to go ahead and get your set, your limited edition set. So it's only available in North America right now. You can get it um, at a few retailers in Canada and the US um, and also on Windsor Newton's website. And I'll link to their website in the description. It should be there, but um, I'll just make sure that the, the link is there. And they even have a feature, an artist feature, that talks a little bit about my process, my story, um, which I thought was really fun to celebrate the palette as well. So the artwork that you see is a landscape painting that I created specifically for the packaging. It is a set of six watercolor tubes that you get. Now these are the professional watercolor paints, so they're really pigmented. I'm gonna swatch them for you. Um, they're really pigmented. The colors I selected would be my, if I was stranded on a desert island and I could only take six colors with me, which colors would they be? And the, with these colors, you can pretty much mix a massive variety of colors. So um, these would be my, if I was stranded on a desert island color. So as you can see in the set, you have six colors. Now I took them out and hopefully, oh, amazing friends. I just got distracted by the, um, the comments. Thank you so much. Yay. Uh, discount code. Interesting, Linda. Maybe one will be coming up. We'll have to see. I'll talk to the good people at Windsor Newton. Um, so as you see here, we have six tubes of watercolor paint. I'm not going to try to pull them out because I have them laid out in front of me here. And the other really sweet thing that they did was they included a sticker. So you get a sticker of my original painting um, that went with the packaging of the box. So I thought that was really special. And it's signed by me and um, yeah, hopefully you'll have it on your painting station so that you can paint along with me too. So let me show you some of the projects from the book that use these colors just to get your creative juices flowing. If you, again, have the book, maybe you haven't painted these ones yet, but again, remember what I'm showing you is always guidelines. So even my step-by-step -step process, I want to empower you with how I would do something or how I would um, have you approach it for the first time. But really my hope is that you paint these over and over and with each time you paint them, you start to explore your own artistic expression of them and just really lean into playing and having fun. So here is one of my favorites, the apple. And of course the lovely stones. I think the other one is upside down, so we're gonna do this. I really had fun with this one because it's a simple painting project, but it teaches you about value. It teaches you about how to put in shading and just creating some dimension in your painting, which I think is huge. And then of course our simple landscape. And we need wreaths, especially if you're doing greeting cards. Hopefully you were able to use this reference for some greeting cards. And it's funny, I'm turning around thinking about the different ways that it could sit. And I'm thinking about even having it in a frame, but I've painted this wreath a few times and I've changed the color based on the season. So again, I hope that you're inspired to do the same as well. Now this one has a little bit of that permanent rose, but I want to show you the florals because I've been playing around with using different colors in my floral artwork. Um, and I want you again to use this one and I feel like you can change the expression of it just by changing up the color. So that's another one. And of course, mushrooms. We can't, we can't not include mushrooms. I still feel like mushrooms are really fun to paint. Um, even now as we're exploring color and even with the season, I don't know, we've had a lot of rain. If you have sunshine where you are, please send me some. We've had a lot of rain recently, so sunshine would be great. So what I'm going to do, uh, Payne's Gray, just saw best comment. <laughs> would not be Nikki without Payne's Gray. And I'm going to show you how to use Payne's Gray and again, the colors that I've included in this palette to really create those moody colors that you know I love so much. Question, I plan on getting watercolor made simple book, but why are the colors different from the ones 
recommended for the course? So the, that's a really good question, actually. So Watercolor Made Simple, my course, I created that three years ago now, four years ago now, I want to say. And as an artist, as I'm creating and painting and teaching, I'm developing as well. So I've been able to um, suggest colors that you'll have more success painting with. So those colors that I recommend in Watercolor Made Simple, it's funny, I just reviewed them. They're still fantastic colors. They still exist in my palette. But as an artist, I'm still growing and developing and changing. And I think that's the beauty of being an artist is still having that development and growth. And it talks to you about the paper. So I, have, I hope that answers the question, Audrey. So, um, and even if you were to look at the colors that I recommend in that class, oh, I always say use what you have and use something similar. So if you don't have access to the colors that I use, then look at the colors as I'm swatching them in the lesson and then go ahead and use something similar that you have or color that makes you really excited because maybe they aren't the exact same colors that I'm using, so. Okay, so let's go ahead and do a little swatching. Now, professional watercolor pigment, there is a difference. When you work with a professional pigment, and the more I'm learning about how watercolor paint is made and um, the quality of the pigments that are used in the professional line, you will get a saturated, beautiful color that will be really lovely to paint with. I think I'm going to switch um, the view. I'm going to do desk only so that you, so that you can um, see my whole desk. Nope, that's the wrong camera. We're going to do this instead. There we go. So you can see my whole desk. You don't need to see me, do you? Maybe we'll just show me a little bit. So when you are using professional watercolor, and I, I do have a palette next to me, but I figure I'm just going to swatch directly on the paper um, so I can do a little bit of playful color mixing and um, just showing you a unique process. I, I don't know that I've done this in a class or not. And I should talk to you about the paper too. So the paper that I am using is the um, Windsor Newton Professional. Do, 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 do. So it's cold press, 100% um, cotton, 140 pounds. This is the one that I paint on on a regular. Um, I actually really love the fine texture. So this is a fine grain versus a really textured rough grain. Um, it's cold press. So if you paint on hot press, then that um, paper is smooth. So really good for if you're doing illustrated work and you're scanning your artwork, the hot press smooth is um, will be a really nice surface for you. So the colors that we have that I am laying down, I'm gonna do this so you can see. This is what's included in the set. We have Windsor Yellow, Alizarin Crimson, Windsor Blue Green Shade. So again, these act as your primary colors that you can mix tons of colors with. But then I added my permanent sap green because I just had to have that bright green that I'm gonna show you mixing with another color. My burnt umber, which is really great. And of course, paints gray. I was demonstrating this color on the weekend. And I think I made a few others fall in love with it. So those are the six colors that you get in um, the set. And again, a little paint is going to go a long way. But what I like to do when I am color swatching, just look at how nice and saturated that paint is. So if you're painting and you're getting frustrated because maybe the colors are dull, you can't mix them really well, Look at how beautifully saturated that alizarin is. Um, it could be two things. I always start with paint first because the quality of the pigment of paint will affect the saturation, but it is the easiest thing to correct. So I just added a bit of water so I can um, make it a bit translucent so you can see, again, just the undertone of that red. And blue is my favorite color. So you can change the paper that you're using next, but if you, look at that pigment, that blue, um, but if you work on adding just even a few tubes, maybe it's just these first six that you start with and incorporating a more professional range, then you'll start to notice your paintings will really sing. The, um, they'll be brilliant, they'll be a, even when they dry, because we know watercolor paint dries lighter, even when they dry, they'll be a really nice 
saturation and you can create that depth easy. There's our sap green. And then burnt umber gives us an opportunity to warm up tones. So again, if you're painting some landscape, earthy tones, you want to paint buildings, maybe you're doing some on plein air. And again, just adding some water to it so that you can see how nice and translucent it gets. So full strength saturation, there she is. Beautiful Payne's Gray. And then I will dilute it down a bit. So again, you can see how saturated it is. I need to actually pull up and add a bit more water so you can see the undertone. And I really like Winsor Newton's Payne's Gray. I've used others in the past, but theirs um, is a little bit more like an indigo versus a violety undertone, which I'm not a huge fan of. Violet doesn't show up often in my paintings. But there are the six colors. So how about we do a little um, color swatching? Let's see if there's any questions. Could you order in England? I hope so, Ian. I, I know right now they're only available in North America. Will they ship to England? I'm not sure. I can ask and maybe post something in our um, group, Watercolor Made Simple group, if you're a student of mine, and I can even post in the comments here on YouTube. Okay, so there are the primary colors. So let's say we were paint, painting something um, where we require a little bit of a yellow ochre and you have these six colors to work from. I would grab some of this lemon yellow and I might switch to the palette in a second. I may not. I just, like I said, want to play and have fun. I'm going to use some of that lemon yellow or that Windsor yellow and then add a bit of that burnt umber. And because I'm mixing on, let me get it nice and close. Because I'm mixing on the paper, you can see that yellow coming through. It creates almost like a gold glow. So again, if you're looking for something that has a little bit of a gold undertone, I'm just gonna pull away so you can see that yellow through. Then you can create a really beautiful warm yellow using that burnt umber. I'm even gonna grab a little bit more of this yellow. And again, color mixing directly on your paper um, can be really fun because you can, again, observe how the colors either fight one another or how they blend in together, which is kind of cool. So again, depending on how much yellow you're including in your mix versus the burnt umber. Let me move that over so you can see. We can get everything in camera there. Um, that will determine, again, if there's more yellow undertone or if there's more of that sort of burnt un umber undertone. So that's burnt umber mixed with the yellow. Let's see what kind of red we can mix. Maybe we want something that's a little bit deeper and warmer. And if you have any of these colors or want to do some color swatching with me, grab your supplies. That way you can kind of listen, watch, maybe swatch with me. So there is our alizarin. And my paints are drying a tiny bit, so I might start using my mixing palette. But look at that deep, beautiful. So this again is the alizarin with the burnt umber, and it creates almost like a burnt sienna. I'm just going to dilute it and show you what it looks like diluted. So look at that rich, warm, and again, it kind of reminds me of a burnt sienna. Isn't that great? And then I'm going to dilute it even more. Let's go over here. Just a gorgeous color. So I would use these three primaries to do some color wheel practice, again, getting to know them, but then start to bring in some warm tones and see what kind of mixes you can create with them and really just have fun doing that. So I'm going to grab this beautiful Windsor blue and it is really saturated. So this is more of a staining color. So if you're trying to lift it off the page, um, it will create a stain on your paper. So again, if you're creating highlights and want to avoid um, you know, not being able to lift, then you might want to bring in your masking fluid so that you can preserve that paper. Okay, so let's go ahead and again, I'm going to use that burnt umber, which I might need to get a little bit more of. And the burnt umber mixed with, oh, I hope you can see it on camera mixed with this Windsor Blue is creating this teal 
turquoisey mix. I'm going to show you right now a little bit diluted. Look at that. Look at that beautiful. It's got like a greeny undertone becoming more of a teal sort of blue. Let me see if I can brighten the exposure a bit. There we go. So again, look at that beautiful color just by Burnt Umber. If you don't have Burnt Umber in your palette, I'm telling you you need it. Burnt Umber and that Windsor Blue Green shade. Again, just creating this gorgeous, I can, I can imagine beautiful florals painted with that, even a beautiful ocean green. That would be stunning. Okay, so we used Burnt Umber. Let's see what happens when we mix a tiny bit of Payne's Gray. So remember Payne's Gray is really saturated. And I'm going to add a bit of water just because I want this next color, which is our sap green. So again, our sap green is quite a, a grassy green, but if you want to paint something that has a little bit more of a deep forest green, which is definitely something that I like to paint in my paintings, look at how we can transform that beautiful sap green using the Payne's Gray. So I'm just going to add a tiny bit more Payne's Gray. Oh, maybe a little too much. So Payne's Gray is super saturated, highly pigmented. Oh, I actually really like that actually. It's like a deep forest emerald green. It's actually a color I'm looking to hopefully paint an accent wall in my bedroom. I have to remember that. I have to bring my, my color swatched watercolor palette with me. Look at that beautiful green. So again, hopefully you can see the paint's gray there. So that permanent sap green, really nice and bright. But if you mix it in with the um, paint's gray, you get that gorgeous deep sea green, which is beautiful. You know what I might even do? Let me show you the yellow and the red. So again, thinking about florals, let me move back over to this side. I'm going to add, so my, my water is a little bit dirty from the Payne's Gray, so I've got a little bit of a greeny undertone. But if you wanted to create some beautiful, um, like peachy kind of tones for florals, you can easily do that by mixing in that yellow and alizarin. I'm going to add a little bit more yellow, I think. get my peachy tone that I'm imagining. And color mixing is all about play. So I know that we do color mixing in the book and in the classes. I have a color mixing class and book as well. Uh, when I'm revamping, I really feel like color mixing is something that you should play and explore more of so that you can be comfortable with creating your own colors and mixes. There we go. So this kind of reminds me of that um, buff titanium that I've used in some classes. It's a really lovely tone if you're starting to paint portraits and wanting um, a little bit of a warm sort of skin tone, that would be a beautiful color to use for that. Okay, so these are some of my um, favorite mixes. I'm just gonna grab a pencil. This is a pencil, it's a brush. Here we go, grab a pencil. So that I can show you how I remind myself to you of what color mixes I've used. So this one here is our blue plus um, our burnt umber. Because, and especially, we'll just do the one, but because when you're looking at this color here, you might think that you'll need to add yellow to mix this tone and you may not remember that you actually use this warm brown. I'm going to show you what that yellow and the blue look like when you mix them together. That's why it's really important to make notes. Look at that saturation. Oh, there we go. So you're going to get this really bright, completely different, really bright green. And even if I add a little bit more yellow, it'll be an even more vibrant. I mean, it's still a beautiful green, but again, if you were looking at this color that you mixed, and even as it's drying down, um, I'm, I'm just so, I'm always in awe of mixing colors like that together to see what you get, but it's just, yeah, it's stunning. So this is even just a beautiful bright green, 
but this is what you get when you mix the yellow with the blue. Not this turquoisey, um, deep, deep turquoisey blend. Okay, let me see if there's any questions. Let me go ahead and do a little double. There we go. Okay, what did you guys think? Do you have questions about the colors? Again, look at how now that this is nice and up close. Oh my gosh, I think these are my favorite colors here. But even look at that burnt. And again, it looks like a burnt sienna. So there are colors that you can mix um, with just these six colors that you don't need to invest in. So again, if a professional watercolor tube is something that maybe you haven't tried yet or you want to experience, you don't have to replace every single color in your palette with just a few key colors and then knowing how to mix them or just being courageous with trying mixes. Make sure you write down what you're mixing so that you can remember and then play with different strengths. Like maybe you mix this burnt umber um, and blue together, but you mix more burnt umber and then do a transparent wash to see what the undertone is. And then the next time you add more of the blue, Make sure again you do a nice wash of it too to see what the undertone is and then make note of that. So then when you sit down to paint a composition, so maybe you're you know thinking about painting this floral piece, I suddenly have colors now that I've mixed, these tertiary colors and beyond, that I can paint a version of this but do maybe more of a fall scene um, and have something that has a lot of warmth in it. I probably should have grabbed my other wreath because I've painted this a few times, but I have one that's very cool. And this, because I've used that alizarin and some of the burnt umber, it's created that warm tone that kind of changes it, makes it feel a little bit more um, like summer. Or not summer, like fall, which is my favorite season. I'm going to put the little palette here because I think it's so sweet with our little sticker. I love that so much. Okay, so let's see if there are any questions. I'm going to take some water just because I've been chatting. Okay, does the book align with the online course in terms of chapter sections? Asking in case I use them hand in hand. So I would recommend that they do work together hand in hand, and I'm going to tell you why. The book, and it was interesting as I was working on the book because I'm used to that visual video component. Um, so we've added QR codes that take you to a video component. I don't know if you've noticed them, and even there's a QR code in the back of the book so that you can download larger, because some people didn't see this. I'm gonna show it to you. So you can download larger um, drawings. So it's this code right here, um, so that you can download lar larger versions of these line drawings. So the information in the course and the information in the book are similar. The way I describe them is different. The exercises may have a little bit more of a twist to them in the book. Again, the book is newer than the course, so I've even updated how I teach things and my personal techniques, but I feel like they're complementary. Whenever you can review information multiple times, sometimes there's information that will just click. Maybe you need to hear it, needed to hear it a few times, or you needed to actually sit and practice and then hear the information again so that it... Um, you absorb it differently. I feel like that happens to me. I am working on, I should probably tell you, I am, I've been working on my portrait um, skill and my approach to how I do portrait. I've taken multiple courses, online, in-person, read books, and it always starts the same. Like you're always getting the same information, but it's just the delivery of the information and you're at a different point in your experience level when you're getting information. That sometimes some things suddenly click and in that moment, your process becomes easier and then your muscle memory kicks in. You start to develop the, your own way of doing things. So I say they go hand in hand. That might have been a long-winded answer, but I hope that answered it. Oh, I'm so glad, Diane, because again, trying to just pick six, I was like, oh, oh no, which one? It's like just add, adding a few of your children and leaving a few children out. I know that's really extreme, but it kind of like was a bit of a process for me to really think about if you only had six, what could you do with those six? And I really feel like these six are exciting colors um, that you can have a lot of fun with and do a variety of paintings. So whether it's florals, landscapes, um, urban studies, portraits, you can mix a lot of colors with these um, six, which is good. 
Oh, amazing, Myrna. Myrna's painted every um, project in the book, which is amazing. And I think going back to paint a second time is also it's something that I do often myself. Um, when you repeat that process, again, that's really when you start to develop your skills and confidence. And sometimes we have really high expectations of ourselves when we sit down and we just paint something. So whether um, I don't have the sheep in front of me, but maybe it's, you know, this apple. So we sit down and we think, I'm going to paint this apple, and the first time I paint it, I'm going to be successful. And when you're not successful, you start to feel badly. Well, sometimes, I won't say that, gen but generally, as artists, we're very critical of ourselves, and we compare, and we want to be successful every time we sit down and paint. But the more you practice painting the same thing over and over again, that's where the success happens. So when you're looking at other artists and they're you know, presenting you with their finished piece, that's often something that they've sketched, they've color swatched, they've practiced, and then they've painted a final version of. So I think that's really important if you're able to paint the same thing over and over again, that process is key. It's key in any um, development and any developing of technique, whether it's you know painting or lettering or playing an instrument, it's that repetition that's really important. So Ruth's asking where you can buy it. So the set is available um, online, so windsornewton.com. And again, it should be in the description, but I'll link it in the comments. It is available if you're in Toronto, um, Gortzman's has them in stock, which is really exciting. In the US, I'd have to confirm on retailers, but they are currently um, rolling out into retailers in the US and Canada. I don't know if Windsor Newton Online, like .com, will ship to Europe overseas. Um, I'm going to ask and then I'll put it in the comments after we're finished our live session. Okay. Uh, Nancy's saying, just order the book of the beginner advanced courses. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. And the good thing about the book is you can have it next to you. So the moments where maybe you're not connected to the internet, maybe you're sitting out in the yard if it's summertime for you um, and you want to be able to still paint along, at least you've got that reference. I love books. Um, I, I, have, I still take courses at, and I still buy books and I am still, you know, picking up tips from other artists and instructors. So for me, if I can hold something in my hand, that is, yeah, is really good for me. Okay. Oh, good, Audrey. I'm glad the explanation was good. Yay. Thank you, Beth. Yeah. Did, oh, Gortzman had them on sale. So you need to go in and make sure you grab a set. And um, I wonder if she has any of signed ones. So I did sign a few of the sets. So you, they do come signed with my signature on the package. Let's do that. Um, but I did physically sign a couple of sets. Oh, I do have one of the set that I do have is signed, which is really good. Um, so I asked them to add them to Amazon. So I don't know if they're on Amazon yet. I don't think so. It just takes a bit of um, time, which is with computer systems and technology. Um, everything is a little bit. Oh, Cheap Joe has it on sale as well. I'm actually doing a demo with them tomorrow, which is amazing. Um, yeah, so hopefully they'll be rolling out more. And then I guess if, you know, they're Windsor and Newton are seeing that they're doing well, then hopefully they'll bring out more sets. So right now there's limited edition. Um, I don't remember how many, there's, you know, hundreds of them available. Um, but if they do well, then maybe they'll do another run. And I'm pretty sure they will, especially if they know that you're enjoying painting with them and having success with them. So just let me know because I can shoot them an email, which is amazing. Okay, so Beth is saying, this is exactly what I'm working on, the emotional and mental aspect of, yeah, that's really tough, of not being disappointed with the painting, but looking at it as one with a little more experience. So I'm working on something um, myself right now and I'm just looking at the time, so we're good. So I'm gonna chat with you a little bit more and maybe answer a few more questions, but I'm working on something right now and I'm including in my instruction, so it'll be an online class, um, to remove two words out of your vocabulary, good and bad. So we are not going to use those words anymore to describe our art, I think just removing those two words and including adjectives that are a little more supportive is going to do wonders for you. Because sometimes as artists, again, we're very critical of ourselves and we sometimes don't see the talent and um, the beauty and the art that we create. We often see it with a little bit more of a critical eye that's a little bit more judging as well. 
you would be surprised at how many people will look at one of your paintings and think, I wish I could do that. Or that is, you know, striking. It is, you know, the colors are brilliant. I love the use of value and shading in, in that piece. Some days our art comes together. Some days it doesn't. If you are stressed or busy or um, maybe a little bit unsteady that day, unsure of what you want to create, that'll come out in your art, guaranteed. So if we can start using other adjectives to describe our art, even if it's a process that maybe you're not um, as excited about the end result, so the process maybe was fun, but you're not excited with what came out, then what are words that you can use to think about how you would describe that piece as an end result? So I want you to think about the process. Was the process empowering? Was it fun? Was it relaxing? Was it meditative? <clears throat> Did it make you feel happy or excited? And it's the tactile experience of putting paper to, or brush to paper. And you know, what was that connection like? And then look at your piece. And I want you to think about, and I'll tell you a story. I'm sure I've shared the story too, but I want you to think about aspects of your piece. So I'm going to point out, you know, I really love the shadowing or the, the value and the shading that I used in the leaves. It reminds me of vintage illustrated art, which is something I really love. I love the vibrance of the red and how it contrasts with that highlight. So there's a really nice use of value scale there. And so start to talk about your art in that way so that you can remove those two words, good and bad, because they don't do anything for you. They just make us feel um, deflated or like we have to meet an expectation where that's not what making art and the finished product is all about. It really is the expression of what just came out. It's just, you know, that is what needed to come out that day. I had an artist teacher, an art teacher. I'm going to show you this one because there's something, there's actually a couple of things in this painting that I thought, oh, I want to do it over. I don't, you know, there are aspects of it that I know I can teach better or I can, you know, improve on. And instead of focusing on that, what I, I can do is look at aspects of it. I really love how there's a contrast in the blue of the water versus the blue in the sky. And I wonder if I paint it again, if I can really bump out those clouds and see what happens if that changes the brightness. And then I can, you know, look at the shading and think, is there enough value range? And I can talk a little bit about, you know, maybe popping in a bit more value range here. So instead of looking at this painting and saying, oh, it's bad, and then I'm deflated and I may be disheartened and maybe it stops me from picking up my watercolor, you know, for a little while, then let's think about different ways that we can describe our finished piece in a more empowering way. Okay. I feel like I went again, that was a little bit long winded, but I think it's, I think that's really important um, as you know, an artist and especially when you're showing, maybe you're sharing on social media, maybe you're sharing within the Watercolor Made Simple group. And, you know, I remember the first time I showed my art and exhibited in a group exhibition and had people, the public who didn't know me and had no relationship to me, come and experience my art. And it felt like I literally just opened up my soul and my heart and, you know, was, I had it up there so that people can critique and criticize and maybe not understand. So I feel like that, you know, is hard for us to do as artists. So that's why I always commend people for showing your artwork, um, online and sharing on social and having others experience it with you. I think it's a beautiful process, but it can be a little bit scary. Okay. Okay, I'm going to see if there's anything else here. Oh, yay. Thank you, Diane. Love language for art. Oh my gosh, yes. Like a love language for, I love that, Audrey. I'm going to use that if that's okay. So wonderful. So much respect and kindness for the art in ourselves. Oh, yes. Always, always, always. And I think, you know, that is what I hope to put behind everything that I do is just, you know, remove that pressure i think the expectation and um, make it really approachable and make it fun and still have it so that you can express yourself and create for the sake of creating um, and really empower you again whether it's with um, really great art supplies whether it's your mindset whether it's my technique for how i do things and when it comes down to it there is so much pressure in the world 
that our art should be something that fills us up and that brings us joy and makes us happy and again gives us the energy to deal with whatever else is happening in our day-to-day -day, if that makes sense okay this has become a little bit of a podcast episode <laughs> and my unboxing so i want to thank again the good people at windsor newton they have um really created this push to sharing artist stories if you haven't been to their website subscribe to their newsletters they're starting to share the history of pigments and where colors you know were first used and how they're made which is so fascinating um, i've been really diving into the history of color which is really cool they share um, technique videos and artist stories i'm sure i mentioned that um, which i think is always empowering when i was starting out with life by design other makers stories is what fueled me so the days where i was kind of like not sure what i wanted to do or where I was going, I would turn to a story. And it was that person's story that inspired me. So yeah, subscribe to their newsletter, go on their website. I will um, ask the questions that you've just asked me to get clarification. And then in YouTube, I will answer that in the comments below. Um, I hope you've subscribed to my YouTube channel. I am trying to post a new video every Thursday. And um, if you have suggestions for videos that you'd like to see, please let me know. I do have a new class that I am in the process of making the other side of my studio. I have paper and stuff all over the floor. It's a beautiful, a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful mess. Um, I also have an interesting, um, really interesting announcement coming out about the book that I think a good part of the population is going to enjoy. So that's coming out soon. And again, just thank you for being in this space with me and um, for your support i always have said this but my creative community around watercolor made simple um, is just so supportive and kind and warm so if you haven't connected in our facebook group or connected with the community then um, i urge you to because they're just some amazing people amazing people okay so a few more questions if you have to hop off thank you for joining me i'm gonna hop on i've got a few more minutes and i'm not in a rush so i'm gonna just answer a few more questions and see who else is in the chat here okay um audrey says i can use it thank you audrey <laughs> i will credit you um i see that your children are artists what are their mediums so rosemary is asking about my kids so i have my son marcus is 20 he'll be almost 23 he is doing his master's in fashion journalism. He is a journalist. He graduated last year um, from a school here in Toronto, in Ottawa, and he is a talented writer. Um, and his expression with words is just inspiring and beautiful. My daughter is studying industrial design. She just today, actually tonight, has her last presentation. She's finishing up year three. She so that makes her she's twenty. And uh, she has one more year to go to finish her thesis and she is studying um, industrial design as well as ceramics. So her painting skills and her um, vision for how to make things like so that they physically work. I have been, you know, able to be gifted some of her beautiful creations. So she um, uses, yeah, a little bit of her vision as well as her artistic talent to create some really cool things. So who knows, maybe, maybe the kids will come into life by design a little bit more when they graduate from school. But yeah, their creativity is um, really inspiring actually, really, actually, really inspiring. So which of your colors are warm and which are cool? Okay, so Elizabeth, uh, Diane is asking, what I'm gonna do is get rid of me and I'm going to zoom out a little bit. There we go. So whoop, if we look at, again, I don't have a color wheel in front of me, but if we look at the color wheel, the blue, anything that has a blue undertone is considered cool. Anything that has yellow is considered warm. Red can go both ways. So red can have a little bit of a warm undertone. And I feel like the alizarin has a tiny bit of a warm undertone but it can lean blue as well, um, depending again on how much blue is in that red. Sometimes the primary red, so if you're using like a permanent rose, can be very, very cool, which means it lacks any yellow. So then again, if you're looking at the color wheel, anything to the left of yellow will be warm. Anything to the right, I would say of red would be cool. And then greens um, are primarily uh, warm because they are mixed with yellow and blue. And then your umbers and siennas and things like that are definitely on the warm side. This Payne's Gray is definitely a cooler tone. 
Um, some paints gray can le lean towards a little bit more of a violet purple, which makes them have red in the undertone, but I would still consider them to be a cool color. I'm gonna show you actually something that I do. So these are all my Winsor & Newton professional colors. You see, I have a ton. I like to swatch them this way so I can compare them side by side with another color in that range. Maybe even take a screenshot of this. And again, this is recorded so you can go back to it. But sometimes it's hard to see what's cool and what's warm. I'm gonna zoom in. So here we go. So Windsor Red Deep is a cooler red than the Cadmium Red Deep that has a lot of more of like an orangey undertone to it. The quinacridone magenta is more violet, so it's leaning towards the blue. And the permanent rose, still a cool red, but not as cool as the quinacridone magenta. Okay, so when you can swatch colors like this and you know, grab all of your blues and put all of your blues side by side, line them up, and then start swatching and labeling them, you'll be able to see what has you know, a more cool, so that vibrant -y French ultramarine next to a you know Windsor blue that has a little bit of a green undertone. So that's my Windsor blue green. Okay, so that's a really great practice to be able to swatch um, and make sure that you understand which colors in your palette are warm and which are cool. Okay, because there is a range. I hope that was helpful. I art class every day. I always feel joyful in taking your courses. Oh, I'm so glad, Nancy. Thank you. That means a lot. I put a lot um, of heart and soul into those. So, and I often, when I'm doing something, I'm like, how would I teach this? How can I make this easy? How can I simplify this? Um, so I'm glad. Thank you so much. Yes. Okay. So sharing the link. So I'm pretty sure it's just uh, Windsor and newton.com um, if you go onto our website you know i will put it in the description just to make sure but it should be windsornewton.com okay thursday topic would be great to create a color wheel yeah so i teach that in the book and in my classes so maybe i can talk about the color wheel and um, show you i am revamping the color mixing made simple ebook um, including a ton of my personal color mixes and my favorites and things like that. So um, color wheel, definitely. If you've taken a class with me or you've, you've done the book, there is even a QR code in the book too if you need more of a video example. Um, but yeah, those are, are available. Okay, do, 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 perfect. Okay, so if that's it, thank you again for joining me. Thank you for enjoying this live and unboxing with me. And I hope you're inspired to play with some color mixing once you've um, been able to get your palette. If you do remember, it comes with the sweetest. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with my sticker yet. I might put it on my laptop actually. Um, but yeah, and just thank you to the good people at Windsor Newton who've been just incredibly supportive over the last few years um, and it's been just a joy hanging out with you so thank you again i will see you next time and again remember to subscribe to youtube so you get notified of these automatically so um, again newsletter updates that's usually where we share everything first so if you haven't subscribed on lifeidesign.com make sure you subscribe to newsletter updates uh, we've got some good things planned. This year has been a year of creation, which is fantastic. So thank you again for tuning in live. I will see you all next time. And um, again, if you have any other questions, pop them in the, the uh, comment section in this video. And I'm going to pop in through the next few days and make sure that I answer everything. Okay, have an awesome afternoon and I will see you guys next time.